Hello darlings, I am Cassandra. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for coming. For those of you who are new to my channel, child, let me introduce you to the Jungle Beauty Goddesses, the life-size fabric sculpture dolls you see sitting behind me. I created these dolls myself, and as I was making them, they would not stop talking to me, and this led to my Jungle Beauty Goddess book series and oracle deck. I'm going to use my oracle deck to give you an inspirational message about money and building your dreams child. So the first card I have for you is from Jungle Beauty Goddess Katara. And Jungle Beauty Goddess Katara's message to you is your relationship with money is rooted in your childhood. So I'd like for you to take a moment to think back to when you were you know growing up and how your parents handled money like did you guys have enough to eat did your parents say things to you like uh, money doesn't grow on trees um, I remember uh, my dad used to ask me why did I want a lot of money he said because a rich man had the same chances of getting into heaven as um, uh, what does he say something about a camel the eye of a uh, a camel being able to fit through the eye of a needle. And I remember being a kid, I was like, but daddy, you know, a camel can't fit through a needle. He was like, that's my point. That's why you don't want a lot of money. So there was always this attitude about, you just want enough to survive. You just want to have good food. You want to have a decent home, but you shouldn't want more than, so to speak, your share. Another thing I remember about uh, the energy about money in my home is that my dad talked a lot about being modest, being modest, the importance of being modest. And he would always, whenever he would see somebody who um, wore, de excuse me, designer clothes or somebody who was really dressed up, my father would always say, "You see, you see that person over there with that big fancy car?" He said, "I bet you they don't have two dollars in the bank. I bet they don't have a pocket of piss in and a window to throw it out of." And so his thing was. Um, another thing my dad used to always talk about is you want to carry yourself in such a way that you blend in. You don't want people asking you for things. You don't want people want, wanting to rob you. My father said that when people know you have money, they're going to always ask you for it or they're going to, you know, you'll c c create this energy where you're attracting people in your life who just want to be your friend because they want you to give them money or loan them money or buy them things so he my, he always had this um belief this philosophy that you're you're supposed to save because my dad was a big saver my mom was a big spender but my father felt that your money was your business you're supposed to dress nice like my dad always dressed nice he always believed that you're supposed to have really nice shoes nice coat nice belts you know but he did, he wasn't a designer person because he said that he didn't feel like you know he didn't want to go around wearing somebody's name on him he felt that that he, it was just beneath him and he would show us like people who were really wealthy and how modest they how modest um they lived how they carried themselves my father said really wealthy people never carry themselves like they're wealthy the people who carry themselves real showy are people who really don't know how to save and they're probably going to be you know my father so so there's this energy in my home that you carry yourself with dignity you know your clothes are supposed to be clean and are you supposed to have nice things but you're really supposed to work on your bank account so um <laughs> my mother always felt like oh you you know as soon as you get a dime you should spend it you're not going to take it with you that's that was another thing in my home like my mom always felt like you're not going to take it with you so you might as well uh spend it so we had a lot of designer clothes by the way like the the, the teddy pendergrass <laughs> like every designer you know jeans jordash all of that because my mother felt like you know you're supposed to enjoy life and you're supposed to spend and my father felt like you were supposed to be conservative and so i guess you can imagine how that messed me up but any the way you feel about money and your ability to attract it to keep it to um it's really if you look at um the philosophy of your parents 
or the people who raised you, your caretakers, um, whether or not you had enough to eat or what was going on in your family. That will tell you a lot about your attitude about money and what you need to overcome in order to be able to accumulate the level of wealth that you want to achieve in this lifetime. So, um, you're, you're, so just remember, just take a minute, child. Just go back in your head. Think about your parents. Think about, you know, when you were growing up. Um, you know, what, what were the issues about money? Did you grow up in a single parent home? Um, did you ha have both your parents? Did you guys struggle for food? Who was the saver? Did they? What were the things that were said about money? Because if you really just try to take a moment and write down five to ten things that you heard your parents say about saving, about people who have money, that's going to explain to you exactly why you are where you are. I mean, you know, you know, in terms of being able to accumulate wealth. And this is so important because you want to bring up those beliefs so that you can look them in the face and say, you know what, Look, I feel like... Um, I think I don't at some level that I struggle with um, well, let me just say this we lived in a neighborhood where we were the only kids with a dad and um, we I remember when my parents would buy my brothers and I new gym shoes we would dirty up our gym shoes before we would go outside because we didn't want our friends to feel bad so we always felt guilty about having things and my brother and I talk about that today so it's like if you feel guilty about um, you know you don't want to be a show-off you don't want people to think you're better than they are and I think that's something that um, that I've always struggled with you know I don't know if you guys are like this but have you ever worn something and everybody compliments you on it and you just never want to wear it again ever <laughs> I do that all the time. If people are like, oh my God, I'm just like, I won't wear it again. For some reason, it's like, I can't explain it. It's like, you want to stand out, but yet at the same time, you, you want people to like you and you want to fit in. And sometimes those are two opposing energies that keep you stuck. So you never really excel. You never really expand. You never really grow and evolve and develop the financial stability that you want because there is this part of you that's holding you back because you don't want to lose your friends. You don't want your friends asking you for money or want, wanting to borrow things from you. You know, it's almost like um, money also builds this camaraderie. You know, like, girl, you got five dollars, or who's gonna? You know, it's like it's also an energy of closeness. You know, and, and it bonds you when you talk about what you don't have and what you're gonna have one day. And when you have those things, you know, somewhere in the back of your heart that you may not have those relationships with your friends because you're not going to want to give them your money you know um you know that your family are going to be your family is going to be asking you for things so money is really a very loaded and um very um i don't know another word other than loaded but it's one of those energies that a lot of people have difficulty achieving their full potential and um, expanding their prosperity because they have all of these emotions around their family and their friends and being liked, not wanting to be used, not wanting people to only like you for your money, but you do want money. You know, all of those, all of these are issues that you need to work out in your spirit before you're going to be able to attract the uh, level of wealth that you're that you are seeking and deserve there's nothing wrong with money but sometimes you think that it's because you need a raise or you think it's because you know um my ship hasn't come in yet that no once you make peace with money and understand the type of relationships you're going to have with people, the type of people you're going to attract, people who are going to be jealous of you. Like you're, you are, your soul knows that life as you know it is going to change. And, and your soul, for you to accumulate wealth, you first need to make peace with money and all of the good and all of the not so good energy that it is going to draw into your life. The next card I have for you is from Jungle Beauty Goddess Afar. 
And Jungle Beauty Goddess of Fire's message is start where you are with what you have. So this card is saying, well, you know how a lot of times people feel like, well, if I had a loan, I could, you know, start my business. No, child, you, you don't need a loan. What you need is, it's called elbow grease. And I think sometimes, again, it's that relationship with money. You think that, oh, if I had money, no. Uh, Mrs. What's, Mrs. Fields, the lady who, Mrs. Fields Cookies, I don't know if you guys heard of her. I know she has like usually like a, like a cookie shop, like in the malls. She started out baking cookies. She would stand on the corner and give her cookies to a child. She would literally stand and give them away so people can taste them and say, oh my God, these are the best cookies I ever had. And then they would come back and they would buy cookies from her. Um, what was her name? Paula, Paula Dean did the same thing. A lot of times, if you if there is something that you really are passionate about, you really need to like look at look in the mirror child and ask yourself am i really dedicating myself um to this task am i really writing every day am i painting every day am i singing every day um you i want to say this the way society is set up now you have youtube you have instagram you have facebook you have oh my god you have pinterest you we have social media and we have all of these free platforms but in order for you to create a following you have to show up to your channel you have to you, you know you have to give yourself away but what you're really giving away is you're giving away your energy and the people who like you they will follow you and then when you drop that album when you drop that book when you drop when you start selling those things that you're interested in you have already created your following because you were giving of yourself so we when we're talking about starting where you are we really truly need to me more than any other time in our society if you have electricity in your house if you have a cell phone <laughs> if you have a you know what I'm saying if you have a camera if you have a cell phone there is no reason why you cannot promote and market your own business the reason that you're not marketing yourself is because to really show up every day get dressed go on camera you know either you got you know do DIYs or talk to people or make people laugh look at country Wayne child he you know country Wayne is living proof you don't need somebody to market you you need elbow grease you need consistency you need dedication you need to not make excuses for yourself country Wayne just literally started filming himself and he put the videos out and now he just he didn't just blow up no he worked he worked for years when nobody was really looking at his videos until he caught on um, Tyler Perry as another person he is living proof that you just have to put yourself out there Hollywood didn't say oh my god this is the best play I've ever seen in my life no he you know <laughs> he produced his own stuff his own play um, so I guess starting where you are or what you have it just means that when you make up in your mind that you really want something you have to show up consistently hey I'm guilty I mean I am I am I did it one th well, one of the things. I'm sorry, guys. I'm a little, I'm a little hot. One of the things that um, I've learned about myself that I have to watch out for is when I was working on my doctorate degree when I was in school, it was easy to be motivated. It was easy to be inspired and to be consistent because you, because there were my teachers were um, they had expectations for me you know where's the, where's your paper you know you have an exam you have to show up there was someone else holding me accountable and when somebody else is holding you accountable this is the same thing with your job if you don't show up if you don't do the work you don't get paid but see this is the thing that's different about your dream there is nobody who is asking you hey where's that book where are those pages where is you know <laughs> where's that video nobody cares and the thing about it nobody's paying you you can make hundreds of thousands of videos or and i've seen people make i don't know how many but you know like thousands of videos you don't know how long it's going to be before people actually start to like you 
But the thing is, you're 100% sure that they're never going to like you if you don't post. They're never going to find your channel if you don't put videos up. You're never going to get better if you don't do what you're supposed to do. Do you know what I'm saying? So when there's no one holding you accountable, when there's no one paying you, then a lot of people really have a hard time showing up for their deepest, for the deepest desires of their heart. They have a hard time showing up for their true dreams. And when you see the people who are able to be consistent, who are able to show up and, you know, and dedicate themselves to their, to their own, you know, goals, their own aspirations, their own projects. These are the people you see who are extremely successful. So there it goes back to this other, the, um, the other card that I was talking about is about money. A lot of people don't want to work unless they're getting paid. So when you're putting up YouTube videos, anybody know, you're not getting paid for this, Jaya. <laughs> you might get paid eventually. And there are a lot of people who are very successful on YouTube, but they didn't get paid right away. You see what I'm saying? And who knows how many videos they had to actually create before they started creating wealth. So that's the difference between your your dream of dreams, your divine plan, the the um the thing that make us you know live the life the affluent life that i think a lot of us want to live for us to be extremely prosperous i feel like we have to understand that we have to put in the work before we'll see the money not like when you go to your job <laughs> and they give you the money and you do just so much work and you know like a lot of people feel like i'm not gonna do that i'm not getting paid to do that but the think about your dream child is that you have to work maybe for years before you actually see the type of wealth and prosperity that you really want. So starting where you are, what you have what you have is all about elbow grease. You may not get paid for a while, but I promise you if you don't do it, then you're going to always live um, based on what somebody else think you're worth. We know what your employer thinks you're worth, what your hourly rate or what somebody else want to give you. But if you want that big money, that big dream, that big prosperity, you're going to have to understand that you may work for a while before you actually see wealth. So the next card I have is from um, the Jungle Beauty Goddess's father, Dematter. And Dematter says, self-knowledge makes you invincible. I love this card so much because when you know who you are, you know what you like, you know how you feel, you know what you will and what you won't take. I mean, to me, that is the foundation of you being able to navigate through any situation. And I think, like for example, like I know for example, I don't like to work in environments where like where there's blood or I make it dirty, <laughs> you know, like I just know certain things about myself. So I know, but I also know that I like to be from experience. I like to be around people who are um, self-selected, people who are going for their dreams, people who are in a good mood. I, um, when I was a therapist, I, I, I didn't realize that even though I wanted to help people, that when they were depressed that it made me depressed and so it was something that wasn't a good fit for me so knowing yourself to me is more important than knowing what you want to do because knowing yourself is going to help you find the thing that you're most passionate about so here are some things you can do guys to figure out who you are because in, in, in a sense we can say things like like when people ask me, like tell me that they don't know what they want to do with their lives. My thing is, do you want to work? Do you want your days to be the same? Do you want to work with paper or do you want to work with people? Do you want to work outside? Do you want to work, work on weekends? And what mood do you want people to be in when you're around them? Do you want them to be happy, sad? Does it not matter? Do you not want to work with people at all? You'd rather work by yourself. Do you like, you know getting your hands dirty what do you to me before you start giving what you want a label just figure out who you are because now that you know who you are and the type of people you want to be around the type of environment you want to be on be around the type of schedule that is important to you like some people feel like i don't ever i don't want to work midnights um i don't want to work in you know this type of environment around people like this 
figure that out first don't don't try to figure out like well do i want to do this no 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 figure out your environment the p- type of people what age group people who are going to teaching the first thing i ask them is do you like being around little kids do you want to be around um, kids who are in middle school like the middle you know preteens do you prefer high school kids like on based on your personality not based off of like oh how much it pays no nah, oh no 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 what where do you vibe what kind of people do you get along with like for me i know i need people who are i love like sarcastic people i don't mind working with uh preteens who have those good your mama jokes i don't mind working with people in high school i don't don't mind working with people in college you know like i don't but i don't want to work with little kids like i i know that about myself and it's not because i don't like little kids it's because i'm too silly like they their parents are like my baby can't read and i'm like well we had a good time we played outside you know i feel like I, they need structure little kids they need, i think i feel like structure is really good for them because they'll be able to to excel better when they know what to expect e- any student who has had me know that sometimes they're like hey, um dr Sturge, is there, do we have a test coming up coming up and i'm like do we i don't i don't know <laughs> can you check and see <laughs> I'm not an orderly person. I'm really laid back. I curse a little bit too much. So I really prefer working with adults. So figure out who you are and this will help you figure out where you want to go or how you're going to package yourself. Like I tell everybody, to me everybody is a teacher. You just have to figure out who you want to teach. Do you want adults? Do you want kids? Do you want, you know, this population or that population? You know, figure you out. Another thing you can do is look at the Myers-Briggs assessment. And I also find astrology to be very helpful. Just recently, I think I posted a video about it. I just found out that I'm a Sagittarius rising and a Cancer moon. And it just blew my mind because it really, everything makes sense to me now. Everything about my personality makes sense. So I see a bigger picture of who I am. There, There's also, there's a left and a right brain. I'm a right brainer. Like figure out your um you know what what is it oh the myers-briggs assessment um are you e- i'm enfp <laughs> like figure there are so many assessments out here to help you kind of like figure out where you fit into this world and what you naturally like but think about the things that you naturally like i think a lot of times people are just not honest with themselves about just like saying like i really don't like math or some people i really don't want to work in a an environment where i'm in a cubicle or i'm in an office all day like, be really honest with yourself there is a place for you in this world where you will strive and you will thrive and you will be extremely successful <clears throat> but you're not going to be able to um find this particular um occupation or build this business until you first are really super honest about your likes and your dislikes and once you figure that out man you are going to be so on your way but i want to tell you one thing to do when i was looking for a job i did this i didn't know what i wanted to do i just had like one through ten i want to laugh I want to laugh. I want an exchange of ideas. I want to be around people who are self-selected. Um, I want to be around people who are enthusiastic, optimistic. Um, I want to dress the way I want to dress. Like those. Like I was honest. Like I want a clean environment. Like I didn't. I didn't know what that job would look like. To be honest, I wrote a list. <laughs> on a piece of paper with a green pen and I put it inside of a green sock I don't know I read this somewhere child I put it inside of a green sock and I hid it I think somewhere like in my closet and like within two years the the teaching job came into existence I had no idea that I was even talking about being a teacher because at the time I was a social worker and I wanted to do something else in my life. So it is so important to just be honest about yourself and what you like and what you don't like. Don't forget the environment and the mood that you want other people to be in when you are service providing a service to them. Do you want to work with people? Do you want to work um, by yourself? You know, or do would you rather work with paperwork? Do you want to work? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like that is 
so important. So the next card and the last card I have for you is from Jungle Beauty Goddess Chalby. And Jungle Beauty Goddess Chalby's message is some friends are really enemies and some enemies are really friends. Now, what I want to say about this, and this video is getting way too long, is when you know who you are, it doesn't matter if people, everybody is your friend. <coughs> Let me just say this. The universe is always conspiring to bring you to your highest and best self, to help you evolve, to be your highest and best self, to make your biggest and most and grandest dreams to come true right what that means is if you have a boss and I, I talk about this all the time if you have some a boss that you can't stand that's a boss who is pushing you to the next level that's not a bad person everybody in your life is here to help you grow if you look at it right if you know yourself because do you really want to be stuck at that job? Do you really want to be stuck in that position? Do you really want to be under somebody else's thumb? No, you don't. So the thing is, everybody is here to help you. Superman needed, you. Who, wait, what was his enemy? Batman needed Joker child. Um, Muhammad I need needed Joe Frazier. Everybody in our life is, and when we get caught up in, oh, this is my enemy, this is my friend, such and such doesn't like me this person is jealous of me no no everybody is here to push you to be your highest and best self and I think there was this saying they said something like if you don't have haters that means you're not living <clears throat> your best life like the, the fact that you have people who are jealous of you or people who can't stand you that means you must be doing something right so to me knowing yourself knowing who you are knowing what you want out of this world what you want to accomplish, what you want to achieve. Remember, the universe is conspiring. It is lining up all the right people, all the right people, the boss that you can't stand. I'm telling you right now, when I was a social worker, <clears throat> I thought the judges were really rude. And I don't, I don't care. They were just really nasty and rude and egotistical. And there was a, a judge who would say, get this worker out of my courtroom. And they would just talk down to you. And I thought, I have got to finish my PhD. I probably owe my PhD to the judges down in juvenile court. Because I thought, there is no way I'm going to spend my life with people talking to me like this, threatening to hold me in contempt of court, because you're not going to talk to me crazy. So if you talk to me crazy, I am going to. I wouldn't yell at them. I would just say please don't use that tone when talking to me because otherwise I'm not going to be able to answer your question I couldn't imagine letting someone talk to me crazy so everything in your life every person in your life is really there to help you grow if you know who you are right know your relationship with money like no because I'm telling you that if you don't really know in your heart your relationship with money it would continue to um, elude you and you won't even know why because you have to accept the fact when you when you're successful you are going to lose friends people are going to be jealous of you um you're going to have to be comfortable standing out and you don't have to you know live in a dump because you are afraid that people are not going to like you like you've got to make peace with your past and so that you can move towards the future that you have always envisioned for yourself i really hope this video helps someone Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you, darling, in the next video.